Now, most of us would associate a rash, dislike of bright lights and a stiff neck as symptoms of meningitis. But there are earlier signs which can be picked up if parents know what to look for. One person who has seen the terrifying effects of this infection firsthand is former England rugby player Matt Dawson. Uh, we're about to show a photo that some viewers may find upsetting of Matt's two-year-old son, Sammy, who was left critically ill on a life support machine back in 2016. Uh, as horrific as the pictures are, thankfully Sammy has now made a full recovery and his dad is now calling for greater awareness of all the symptoms of meningitis. I'd imagine, Matt, that your blood still runs cold when you look at this I won't pictures. be watching, I won't be looking at that Can picture. Can you not even look at it? <laughs> not really, no. No, no, no I don't, I'm, I'm sort of just about okay talking. Yeah. Uh, talking about it, but no, it's not nice, uh, it's not nice. An incredibly know. difficult period for you and your, your entire family. Um, talk us through what happened, uh, what you'd seen and what you'd experienced before you realised just how severe it was. Uh, well, yeah, this is it. This is uh, the, the awareness, uh, it's meningitis, World Meningitis Awareness Week next week. Uh, so app that we're talking about it because our, our family, myself and Carolyn, didn't have too much awareness. We maybe have, would have gone uh, with looking for the rash uh, and the research that GSK and Meningitis Research Foundation, Meningitis Now, they've all come together. The research says that parents are still looking for the rash. So, uh, you know, I, I, I want to make sure that uh, as many people, parents, friends, family, understand that there are lots of other things to look at. I remember holding Sammy's hand. He was really feverish and you thought, oh, you know, he's got, he's got a virus again. No problem, let's just look after him. And I held his hand and he was sweating up, but his hands were really cold, mm. noticeably cold. Mm. Um, but I didn't realise, I didn't know that was a symptom for meningitis. And it wasn't until three or four hours later when he was getting really poorly did we then go to hospital. Now, we're very lucky that uh, Sammy got through that unscathed. Uh, but there are, are and have been some and continue to be some just truly horrific stories of... Uh, you know, the odd hour, the odd 15 minutes being a real difference between people surviving and not. The tricky thing is, though, and, and we've all got children, but as you say, Matt, you get your, your two-year-old suddenly is ill again. You think, oh, they've got a virus. They have them all the time. They're suddenly going to the nursery. They're mixed with other children. They come home and, and they might be vomiting or they might have a bit of a headache or they might be hot. And you kind of think that's just what it is. But it's it, how do you go from sort of just assuming it's something that you're going to have to deal with as a family in the high temperature to being something more serious? There's, there's an element of instinct about it as well. And as, as parents, we know when the kids have got a tummy bug and when they're putting it on a little mm. bit. We know when they're... Believe me, you will. You, you know when your parents... Uh, when your kids have got a, um, a, a virus opposed to... You know, they're really quite uncomfortable about this. Not just a little bit quiet and in the corner, but they're, they're noticeably um, a lot more ill. Now, it's not always going to be meningitis um, but for kids at three and four or your teenagers you know going to university now starting school now that you're right picking up lots of different you know dise diseases Bugs, um, yeah. passing them around um, it's important to have your instincts about you as well because it's about looking after you it's not just about the kid with in our heads we're talking about uh, Sammy at two years and we're seeing that picture of the baby whereas mm. you know the 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 meningitis with all sorts of strains. You know, we thought we were covered because we had a meningitis C vaccine, but there's A, C, W, Y. There are loads of different strains, which is why we need people to go to that tackleMeningitis.org website to give them that that view for them. I'm just trying to load them with information. To be able to recognise those early to recognise. signs. I'm not saying I've got the, you've got the cure. People want to do vac vaccinations absolutely fine. And I suppose you're saying as well, don't be complacent if your child has had the vaccination because it might not be the particular strain that they get because otherwise parents might think, well, it definitely can't be meningitis because I know my child has had that. Yeah, re really important. Especially the, the uh, kids now going to university, they mm. can have vaccinations that cover a multitude, not all of them, but a multitude of those strains but certainly don't be complacent charlotte you're absolutely right and what did they say when you when you took sammy to hospital then did they realize immediately the seriousness of it uh yeah pretty much i mean by the time uh we left our house to get to chelsea and westminster is maybe 25 minutes and i mean you could see the deterioration of sammy in the car um and, and the rash then started to uh raise its very ugly head by the time we got to 
A and E again. We just thought he's, you know, it's a heat rash, but it's it's looking worse. And he just got whisked whisked away. Mm. Uh, didn't really see him. Um, all but all of a sudden, I mean, within half an hour of being in, in hospital, he was, you know, in an induced coma. We didn't speak to him for pretty much ten days. Mm. Um, so um, again, I'm extremely grateful for the. To, uh, you know, to all the, the medics at Chelsea and Westminster and Great Ormond Street and, and the Cats crew. I mean, they were absolutely incredible, but in the same vein, we, we realised that we were relatively lucky to mm. have Sammy in the state that he is now. And, 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 and he's OK. And, and he's OK. Yeah. And how, how's he getting on? How's life? And oh, is he... he's, he's absolutely... How old is he now? Uh, he's just started school, yeah. He's, uh, so you had, you had he's, did he's his first day? How was, how was uh, mum and dad on his first day, du though? Duck to water. Yeah, well, he's got an older brother. So, yeah, so it's easier for them. He's just itching. But seeing them, you know, seeing them walk up, walk up the garden, both with their rucksacks on, they're about the same size now, so they're, they're like a pair of twins. Aww. But, um, yeah, it was... And particularly... For, for Sammy, hopefully Alex won't watch this, but hopefully Sammy, because he's been yeah. really poorly, to see him progress now just means that, I suppose, just that little bit more. I'm sure Alex was very proud of him as well, though, getting that first day at school. He must be joking. He was pulling him by the ear. <laughs> <laughs>